this book is the entire world and you can like you have to spin it around because it really is it almost feels like it contains the whole world inside of it and I think that that's a brilliant way to describe this book I'm just shook at the talent truly truly just it's disgusting because I wish I would have written it but First of all, I hope everyone is doing okay, and I hope you guys had a wonderful week. I had a very hectic week, and I'm actually a day behind in terms of like filming because, well, I've been juggling like 37 different jobs. I couldn't do anything over the weekend because I was just so exhausted, um, but I read like 140 pages in one night, in one yesterday night, in order for me to be able to film this today, so <laughs> thank you for being here. Yeah, let's just jump right into it. I think the one thing that makes On Earth We're Briefly Gorgeous such a gorgeous book is that it's written by a poet. I love books that are written, like novels that are written by poets because poets have a very unique ability to pull at your heartstrings and also to construct just these really beautiful sentences that are so relatable and it's just genuinely the most beautiful experience. Ocean Vuong has a very particular talent that honestly I can't even begin to understand. After I finished the book and was just completely enamored by his ability to like command language. He's entirely in control of language and it's a really beautiful thing. It's inspiring to see. After reading this book, I genuinely like weeped and was like, there's no fucking way someone, a human being wrote this. There's just no way. It's just too perfect, too good. There's not one thing that I could say that this book could have done better. This book had everything intertwined into it. It was perfect. I think what makes this book so special is that it weaves poetry into biography, it weaves journalism into poetry, into essay writing, and in the literary world there are so many different forms of writing. This book is influenced by all of those elements. I don't think that I'll be able to highlight all of the wonderful things about this book because as a reviewer said this book needs to be like flipped on its head turned around because it, it's quite literally the world and you can't get the world in, in a 15 minute review so I'm gonna do my best and if I'm glancing over to my side it's because I literally have my laptop here with things that I want to uh, cover. I watched a few different interviews with Ocean Wong and in one of the interviews he said when he was asked about what he wanted readers to take from the book. He said, I would hope that readers approach the book, read it and not necessarily take anything away, not possess anything, but perhaps just more of themselves, that they can see more of themselves in the book and that they can carry that and participate in more parts of their life than before. And that was from an interview with Penguin, Penguin Random House. And I think that that is exactly what he did in this novel. On Earth We're Briefly Gorgeous is also an epistolary novel because it is written in the form of a letter to the main character, Little Dog, to his mother, who is Vietnamese and illiterate. So Little Dog and his mother and his, actual, his whole family migrate from Vietnam. You get Ocean Vuong's experience in America growing up in like the early 2000s era and obviously as we know a lot of things went down during that time a lot of politically charged events happened during that time that deeply influenced culture and society and people and all of those things are so beautifully captured in this story he like takes all of these troubles that these children were experiencing and write, making poetry out of it. And I think that that is the beauty of art. When you are able to create art, whether that art may feel depressing, may have a depressing mood tone to it, 
the art itself is not a sad thing, right? Like it's something that you should rejoice. And this is what I was trying to explain to them, like how beautiful, what a gift to be able to turn our hurt, our trauma, our pain into art. And like Ocean Wong does that beautifully. Some of the points that I think are important that Ocean Wong touches on um, are sexual orientation, like um, drugs and addiction, gender, the Vietnam War, which is a monster in and of itself. Like the Vietnam War was unlike any other war, right? And I think we all as Americans know that. And also the main character as a Vietnamese character very obviously knows that. In fact, the, the subject of war is discussed kind of through the lens of his of his grandmother and his mother, who are both suffering from post-traumatic stress disorder. Just to a discussion on like drugs, war, all these other things that we've been discussing, he also is able to comment on race and racism and colorism. And he does this obviously through the challenges that he experiences as a Vietnamese immigrant in America. There are beautiful and heartbreaking stories about how the English language um, is kind of the vehicle to becoming an American, how it doesn't necessarily matter in America if your skin is light because what matters more than that probably is that your tongue doesn't give you out and, and that doesn't rat you out, right? So there's this huge emphasis on English and how without English and with an accent, it doesn't matter if you're white because the accent will always kind of give you away to people. If you have an accent, people will obviously know you're not American. And so there's a lot of things. Language is a, a, a big part of the, of the book as well, which I'll talk about that next because that's actually my favorite thing that's like the, that, the, that's discussed in the book. But we also see how colorism and racism is not something that's strictly American because he makes a point to let the reader know that racism is actually something that was very prominent also in Vietnam. And so he quotes that hate is not just an American problem, like it's everywhere. So he doesn't quote, I'm sorry, in this book he says that somewhere along the lines he says that hate is not just an American problem, that it's kind of a problem that has afflicted the world because people really truly it's not necessarily a problem of race but a problem of people hating those who look different and so there's a there's like there are beautiful stories that that revolve around that um especially i think in terms of in relation to his mother his mother often says like uh don't draw attention to yourself you are you're already vietnamese and for me i think the most powerful thing about this book is the way that Ocean Wong has such a great command over language and you guys will see if you get the chance to read the book and I truly hope that you get the chance to read the book. The importance of language is a, is a huge factor. When I watched the interview with Ocean Wong, he says that this was kind of an experiment for him. He wanted, because it's a novel written to a mother who is illiterate, he wanted essentially to experience with something that could fail. He considers writing a, novel, uh, writing a letter to someone who's illiterate to be an impossibility, but he wanted to take up this challenge to see how much he could actually do with it. He wanted to use language as a bridge to his mother. Um, there's also a lot of literary allusions in terms of like, and also literary influences. At the start of the novel, he has like a quote by Joan Didion and Bay Dows. There's also Magnificent. The think the most significant literary figure that continues to like influence and you can see his influence in the language that's used is Roland Barthes who was a theorist I think in the 60s. His work had a lot to do with like how literature wasn't or independent from culture because a lot of the times if any of you guys have taken a literature course the only thing that you should be looking at is the text and Roland Barthes kind of it was the first person to publish an essay which he called the death of the artist you guys probably have heard of it before and which he says like 
it goes beyond that. Like literature is beyond that. We have to consider the social and cultural influences that are embedded into literature because those are important. And I think that Wong does that, right? He tells us about Vietnam. He tells us about the opioid epidemic. He tells us about racism, about gender and sexuality. And these are all cultural, social uh, problems that are embedded into literature. Because Another thing that I thought was interesting in relation to literature and language was stated in the interview that I watched with him in which he says that he wanted all of these different styles of literature, so like personal essays, journalism, um, nonfiction, all of these things to merge into one thing. He said he wanted them not to not to melt into one another, but to sit together like a chorus, and that's exactly what happens. But to go back to uh, Roland Barthes, I think a good way to explain that mixing of things, Roland Barthes, in The Death of, of the Artist, he writes that the author's only power is to mix writings. And so essentially, Ocean Wong is on the same Roland Barthes uh, ship when he says that you have to, in order to understand and to feel literature, you have to look at the culture and at the social cultural influence on that literature because that's important. That's the only way that you can understand it. And I think Ocean Vuong takes that a little bit further and says like, yes, that's important, but also it's not necessarily about the art, it's more about the people, right? Like, um, it's about joining, joining, or it's about learning about cultures and about people through literature i believe i think i think that that's a very important thing and obviously he does mention that he kind of says that like he wanted this to be he wanted to test the boundaries of language and he wanted to see if he could get to his mother or get closer to his mother through language he throughout the book often tries to describe to his mother what it feels like to be a writer um and he describes it as a shipwreck not like he's like i can't even describe it like i know that it, this is on this is he just like tries to show her through his like own writing style and he's like i know that this sounds like a shipwreck because sometimes the, the story the novel does feel like messy and it doesn't follow like i said any pattern but he did that intentionally he wanted it to sound like a chorus a chorus of different styles of literature and if anything like i feel like this book is emblematic of like everything that i've ever learned about literature i think that like <laughs> if my four years of college studying literature were to be put in a book it would produce this beautiful beautiful amazing book gorgeous gorgeous girls gorgeous gorgeous books <laughs> um but yeah, that's essentially, I think, everything that's important. That's that's enough. That's probably, now I have to go back and edit maybe like five hours of this because I've been talking for a very long time. But unlike my last review, I 100% recommend that you go pick up this book on Earth We're Briefly Gorgeous by Ocean Wong. I think that if you want to cry, if you want to feel moved, if you want to understand yourself and culture and understand your parents and revisit certain traumas in a way that is depicted as art go get this book honestly i don't think that anyone should die without reading this book that's how i feel about it okay